All right, everyone, it's Fadi Kudir here with another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I'm your host here in Ottawa, local realtor. And this show is all about bringing in businesses in the city and let them talk about how their the business is running and what's going on with their business and understand a little bit more about this fantastic city, what it has to offer. And today I am joined with Mr. Marco Lavecchia, one of my bros, one of my really good friends, someone that I've actually always wanted to interview, even though we've had so many conversations before. So I'm bringing him here on the show today, and he's now with a new organization called Produce 8. That's correct. So Marco, tell me a little bit more about your background. Well, I want to start with that, if that's okay with you. Sure. Well, first of all, uh, thanks for having me today. Really appreciate it. I'm glad that we're having this conversation. And as you mentioned, we've had a lot of conversations oh, yeah. th through the years. So, so many coffee talks. <laughs> a lot of coffee talks and definitely a lot of good times as well. So thank you very much. You know, I've lived my whole entire life here in Ottawa. Very fortunate. I have, uh, you know, great careers over a number of different companies that uh, that we've grown. I think Ottawa's positioned, you know, perfectly in the marketplace. There's a lot of great talent in this city. Yeah. Everything from, you know, marketing and salespeople to developers and, and uh, product management people. So there's a lot of, I, I would say, good talent that gives the ability to kind of build a company. Mm -hmm. Ottawa is very much, uh, I feel, kind of an incubator, right? There's a lot of companies that kind of grow and, and, and position themselves for sale, which is part of what I've been doing over the last 20 years or so uh, here in Ottawa, starting with Naval Technologies a number of years ago. And uh, that company we sold to, to SolarWinds. And then after that, where you and I met at AVG, Yep. where we did an acquisition of, uh, of level <laughs> platforms and uh, in the remote monitoring and management space and security, uh, which is obviously a big part of what uh, AVG was. Um, and then after that, uh, I joined uh, one of the founders of Enable Technologies, Mark Scott, uh, and uh, he asked me to, to join his company. They were uh, a local MSP. And uh, the point was, is at that point in time, I think they were about maybe $15, $17 million. And... Uh, probably about 40 employees at the time that I joined. And just a couple of years ago, uh, we grew that company uh, significantly since 2016, and we sold it in 2022 to TELUS. That's amazing. Um, I still remember that call when you're like, hey, bud, I just joined this new company. I know we haven't talked in a couple of months. Come for a coffee. Yeah. <laughs> that's typically how it always starts, that's, right? That's how it started, yeah. No, yeah. That, I mean, it's just, it, it seems like it was a lifetime ago, but it, you know, it's only been, what, seven years maybe? Yeah, pretty much. I would say the last three years have been a whirlwind. You know, as we were building uh, Fully Managed to sell, you know, we got acquired by TELUS for just over $150 million. And that was quite significant in the Ottawa market, right? When you take a look at companies that sell and yeah. uh, sometimes they're a little bit smaller. As I mentioned, you know, Ottawa is really kind of position for acquisition and uh, the last two years just kind of like integrating fully managed into the TELUS monster that it is such a big company with over 70,000 70, employees so that was definitely a challenge but a lot of fun and, and definitely learned a lot of things in terms of how they operate and how they work. Amazing. So for folks that are watching, I just wanted to kind of again dig into the background. We did talk about what you've been doing as far as sales and all of that. But what, what was it that you were selling? Yeah, like I think, like when you take a look at what I wanted to do, you know, I th everybody, a lot of people that know me know this. I wanted to be a professional golfer when I was young. Yeah. That was really, that was really the... Uh, We've talked about that once yeah, or twice. Yes. That, was, that was really uh, my mantra as a kid growing up, uh, trying to, trying to like get onto uh, a school into the U.S. and... And at some time, I had this ambition of getting onto the PGA Tour one day. I had the ability to get into the school into the U.S., but unfortunately, I, I tore my ACL when I was younger and lost my scholarship to a school in uh, in uh, called Ashland University in Ohio. So you have to you have to pivot and you got to think about like what's yeah. the next steps. And so I went to Carleton University, and uh, after Carleton, I went to Algonquin College, and plan there was really to try and see after you know taking political science and, and not sure what I was going to do with that uh, I figured that you know I was always more of a business person and so I, I went and studied uh, business and marketing at Algonquin and I thought it was a great program because it allowed us to you know a lot of people that I went to school with uh, it allowed us to go work in companies um, and work on real projects and, yeah. and real life scenarios and all that kind of stuff and I think that really set the premise for kind of where I wanted to be. And so ever since then, I've been in high tech in, in Ottawa and working in Canada and, uh, you know, with uh, a lot of different types of companies. Mm -hmm. And this is one thing that I, you know, that you're sitting here, I'd like to credit some of some of my work 
that I've learned over the years to Marco and then you know some of the uh, the great coaching that I've had with you you know those uh, water cooler talks where we're coming and hey man I'm having difficulty with this deal what should I do come into my office let's chat sure so talk to me about some of those chats yeah I and think you've had them with <clears throat> a lot of other employees I, I enjoy them yeah I tell enjoy us, them I think I, I think you know my my rationale in terms of what I do is, is to is to help people right I think I take that approach all the time right so those conversations are critical to you know making sure as you're you're guiding your your people and your employees you know yeah. to, to help them out and what they need to do I'm not saying I'm the expert in absolutely everything but you're gonna sometimes you know banter information off of one another and have those conversations and, and provide guidance as best as you can mm-hmm. So, like, yeah, we had a lot of those, you know, oh, right? yeah. <clears throat> and I think, um, like, that's why I, I, you know, anybody that's ever worked with me, I always say, like, it's an open door policy and, uh, and I welcome it. It's an open door policy and come to Jesus moments. So many <laughs> yeah. of those come to Jesus moments. I remember a few on a different occasions, a few different occasions where I'm like, I walk in the office, I'm like, Marco, I'm having such a terrible time. You know, nothing is lining up. This is what's happening. You're, you, your ask is always... What are the activities that you're doing? Mm. So tell me a little bit more about that from a sales background. Like, wh- why is that important? I think you, like, no matter what you do in life, you need to have sort of a plan, mm-hmm. right? I find that there's a lot of people, they go in about doing their activities and there's absolutely no plan with yeah. And those people struggle. And, and so that's kind of why, like, it's not so much about KPIs, but it's about doing certain activities that's going to have a positive impact on what the outcome is going to be. Yeah. And that's that's also kind of the premise in terms of this new company that we're starting called Produce 8, which is a SaaS application um, that's basically work analytics. So if you think about how you operate on a daily basis, a lot of the times we don't know how to operate on a daily basis, right? Like companies, they pay an employee a certain, certain amount of money for a certain profile of job and hope that they have a certain type of outcome. Yeah. What happens in between and how do they operate is kind of like something of the unknown. And the job description for most of these is very, very dull to be honest like it's it's not very descriptive and even if it was i still think you know with with the guidance and help it can be you know put into the right direction so produce eight yeah tell me a little bit more about that i've, I've talked to you about what maybe four or five months ago i said hey marco what's happening you know i've, I've seen things you know you keep saying something is coming, something is coming. Yeah. Tell me more. Yeah, definitely exciting times. So the same founders that, that like Mark Scott, who started uh, Enable Technologies and Fully Managed, uh, Chris Day, who started a number of companies in the MSP space with uh, Joel Abramson, our CEO. We joined forces to really kind of take this company called Produce 8 to the next level. You got the band um, back together? Yeah, the band <laughs> back together. And, and so the plan with Produce 8 is we're, we're a, a SaaS analytics platform so think of work analytics yep and our Just whole yeah. for a second if you don't mind me asking for folks that don't know what SaaS means software as a service Perfect. yeah so the the plan and our premise of the of the business is that we give employees 90 minutes back in the day and so businesses all over the world today and our focus right now is on the msp space but it, it's really kind of like any individual in any business organizations today struggle with productivity yeah Right. And when you take a look at if I just give you kind of three areas to focus in on in business, it could be meetings that you have on a daily basis. It could be collaboration tools that you're using or it could be productivity. All of those things have a major impact on the business. If, for instance, if we take a look at meetings, it's just, you know, we go about our day in terms of how many meetings do I have and how do I work? And everybody thinks that, well, because my calendar is full with meetings, I'm actually doing something. The problem is, is that whatever you're paying them to do, they're actually not doing. That focus time in terms of their task at hand, in terms of what they're doing, is being diminished on a daily basis because of all these collaboration tools that we have, social media technology that we're using, all that kind of stuff. And all of those tools are trained to basically keep you distracted. Yeah. And so the employee as a whole is becoming less productive. The goal of Produce 8 is we're trying to help businesses and employees on how to increase that productivity. So if we can show you through our application where you're wasting time, where your day is going on a daily basis, then mentally you can start making the changes 
on how to improve that. Mm -hmm. And if we can give you guidance on how to do proper meeting structure throughout an organization, uh, how to reduce meetings that you have, all that kind of stuff, all of that is significant money that you're putting back to the business, yep. back to the bottom line. And so that's really kind of what we're going out with. The application has a mobile application to it. You can run it off your desktop. You can see the trends in terms of how you're operating on a daily basis, and it, it starts giving you insight. And so if I compare it to how we used, how we always work, prior to uh, working at Produce 8, I never really kind of took a look at how does my day work out? How, like, I have ideas and plans of, like, in the morning, you know, I need to do X, Y, and Z to get work done. Yeah. And then, as you know, you get into the office, and then all of that goes out the window. Because, you know, your Fatty book. walks in, asks you. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. You're this. doing consultation in the office. Yeah. You're doing all kinds of stuff. And so it becomes challenging for people, for employees in terms of how they operate. I finally have insights in terms of how I work. And so as an example, if I want to set goals of reducing time that I may be in teams, as an example, trying to take a look at responding to everybody or how I work, or maybe I do better meetings in the morning instead of in the afternoon... I can change how I operate on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really kind of what we're bringing to market. There's a few other uh, companies, something like us, but they're more on the monitoring tool side, meaning monitoring employees. We feel that's a culture killer. So that's not what we do. We actually work with employees to try and help them become better, produce more in the business. At the end of the day, they're going to be much happier in terms of how they operate. And, and I think that's going to be the key in terms of like what we're going to bring to market moving. So for the folks that are watching, could you describe the application itself? What is it sort of entails? What, how does it hook into your day from a software perspective? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's super, it's, it's super simple to use. So <clears throat> once you sign up to the technology, what ends up happening is it basically puts an agent on, onto your device and then... You identify what are all the things you want to kind of report on and, and start planning your day. So all the tools that you use. So if you're at work, it's your email, it's your Teams, it's your Slack devices, uh, applications. It could be whether you're working in Microsoft Word or in Google Documents or whatever the case may be. So we ha uh, it could be a proprietary tool that maybe you have. All of those things get pulled into, into the application. And within the next day, it starts reporting into you how much time and how are you using those applications? We just came out with, with a calls feature as well. So not only does it show you on your timeline how your application and what are, how much time you're spending in each application, but then it also shows you kind of like the calls that you're having. Mm -hmm. So where we're going with it over the next little while is not only correlating the meetings that you have and the calls that you have, but for instance, how much time are you spending in internal meetings? How much time are you spending on external meetings, right? If you're, if you're running a sales team, you want your people on external meetings, right? If they're spending 80% on internal meetings, then you can figure out how do I make that change within yeah. my culture, within my structure. Same thing in terms of you may get into a meeting where there's 30 people on a call and there's only two people talking. How much is that meeting costing you? So we're actually coming out with a new feature in the next 60 days. It's actually going to be able to tell you how much meetings are costing businesses. We're probably going to be the only company in the world that's going to be able to produce that type yeah. of metric. And that's based on the hourly wage or Correct. whatever sort of uh, yeah. revenue. That exactly. This, like in the application, the you identify you know how much how much an employee costs you. You can put an average cost for the organization into the application. Yeah. And then it starts basically providing you with all of those metrics. So I feel like for some reason, it's kind of going back to that same sort of comment that you made to me a long time ago. What activities are you doing on a daily basis? So if you can explain to the folks that are watching, why is that important from an activity standpoint to monitor or not necessarily just monitor, but like be able to kind of put a dollar figure on those activities? Yeah, because I, I think businesses don't have an idea what's going on, right? And, and um, we're providing insight into that organization. If you think of, I was thinking about this the other day, um, if you think of 15, 10, 15 years ago, even five years ago, um, how many tools and technologies were you using at work? Mm -hmm. Maybe 10 years ago, maybe there was like two or three that, that you kind of, like you went into work, you logged into Salesforce, you made some calls, you scheduled meetings, and that was your, that was your job. Yeah. But now you're, now you're getting into so many of these collaboration tools that you need to kind of look into and that people are using. So 
you know, now you have, you have email, you have your CRM that you're using, you're having Slack or Teams, uh, Notion, Figma, um, Miro. So all of these new technologies that, that's a salesperson. Asana. <laughs> so many of them. Right? You're, you're like, like I, I question myself, I'm like, how do these people, how do they even work? How can they function? Yeah. It's funny that you say that because we, I'm sitting at the gym yesterday and one of the questions they were asking, because we do this circle every day, and one of the questions they're asking is, what is something that you have so much of that you're using or doing today? And mine was so many software applications, software licenses that you don't necessarily need. Yeah, absolutely. Or, or from the standpoint of we as a company have way too many meetings on a weekly basis. Yeah. So if I were to reduce, if I were to take uh, a 25 person MSP or a 25 person small business and take a look at, hey, listen, how many meetings do you guys have a week? Typically a business will have collectively around 40 or 50 a week. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Think about it. Like, and most of those are an hour long. And, you know, I know that there's a lot of businesses, you know, even in, in Ottawa, Shopify was kind of like, hey, listen, we're, you're not allowed to have a meeting with over two employees and all that kind of stuff. I'm not sure if that's really the strategy that works. I think ideally it's, you know, what's a, what's like a, a meeting manifesto strategy? Like, and when I say a meeting manifesto, it's like you need to have a strategy to say, okay, if we're going to have meetings, we need to be able to say, okay, here's what we're going to be talking about. This is what we're hoping the outcome is going to be. Like you got to have a plan. But it's not just enough to say I'm going to put it on paper. Yeah. Right? You need technology to say, hey, listen, how is it working? Right to back up to say, hey, listen, we're taking, you know, we want to reduce meetings by fifty percent a week. That's probably maybe fifteen to twenty thousand dollars a week to the bottom line on a business. Mm -hmm. And and then when you spread that over the course of the year, it's significant in terms of what it can impact. Same thing on collaboration tools. If you're going from one solution to the next to the next all the time, now think about it. Like most of the times when you work, you go check your email. Then you go check your Teams or Slack. Do I have a message? Then I'm working it on maybe a document, yeah. right? And then I go back and I check my email. Then I go check. So what happens is we're completely distracted. Every time you do that, it takes like five to 10 minutes to, to switch again to start concentrating. And I think what's happening is that we just, as human beings, we're just saying, well, that's just normal now. That's just as kind of the new way. What we're trying to say is, no, it's not necessarily the new way, but we can show you a better way so that you can be a lot more productive, but still get what you're trying to, mm -hmm. what you want out of the tools and technology. One of the biggest hurdles I find in a lot of uh, businesses and a lot of sales specifically is that sort of distraction, right? Like you have, you know, for a, for a fact, at the end of the day, you have certain activities that are supposed to be revenue generating. And there are certain activities that whether you do them or not, they're, you know, you got to do them because they're maybe operational. And then there's some activities that you could get away with not doing completely. Sure. So I guess something like this will definitely be able to kind of highlight that in a, in a way that, you know, the consumer or the business owner can understand that, look, th these are just time wasting. Like th this particular collaboration tool is, is definitely something that's sucking the time out of your business. Yep. This particular one might be a little bit more. Is that sounds about fair? I, I, yeah, I would definitely, I would definitely say that. What it, what it allows, allows you to do is to really kind of take a look at your days, mm -hmm. right? Like we are one of our marketing campaigns is you know as we kind of like go to market and uh, as we push this out when we when we talk about like how do we help you get ninety minutes back in the day? Um, I used to always say you know there's only you know, eight hours or nine hours in a working day. You know, can we get more, can we add more hours to the day? And that's really the wrong approach. No. Right? Like you want to be Very able finite. You, you, you want you want to be able to actually produce more in less period of time. Yeah. And what we're trying to do is help those organizations do that. Right. So if you think of almost on a daily basis, our statistics show us that, you know, typically about four hours a day is being dealt with in collaborative tools. That's a lot of time on a, on a daily basis, right? And so I don't think companies are paying employees to spend four hours a day dealing in tools and technologies. I think they're paying them for a certain job with an outcome. Mm -hmm. So if we can reduce that and we can change how they operate, then we know that businesses are going to be able to kind of produce more. You also have to worry about employee burnout, right? Because 
employee burnout is, uh, is, is a real problem nowadays, right? Because yeah. if you're a person that you just take a look at your calendar and you're in six meetings on a whole entire, in, in an entire day and you're working eight hours a day and then you have a lunch break, hopefully somewhere in there, then how are you going to get your job done in an hour? So most yeah. of the times those people are working extra time, right? Well, that's and that's where you're like the meetings. Problems. Just because you had a meeting, it doesn't mean that it's that meeting is, you know, you're getting stuff done. Sure. What you're doing is you're collaborating, you're maybe just getting notes, you're setting up for, for that work to be done. And then you're left with a couple of hours at the end. It's not enough. The role of a job has changed post pandemic, right? So when the pandemic hit and everybody was in the office, if you take a look at your schedule going back five years, you never had as many meetings as you did today, right? To have a meeting, to pull people into an office or a boardroom and say, hey, we're going to have a meeting. It was always very thought of. There was a plan. There was something associated with it. It was a much better way to operate. So people were getting more to things done. But nowadays, it's so easy for everybody to just basically put a meeting in your calendar for 30 minutes or an hour and take that time away from you to have maybe a discussion that you used to have by the water cooler or you walking into my office and saying, hey, can I have a chat with you? Yeah, And, and that's that, the change in business. Now exactly. Actually. And that, that discussion would have been, like you said, five minutes or a couple of minutes and I, I got the message clear, okay, I'm going to go ahead and do it. And I'm, I'm not having to worry about scheduling that in due time. You still have that time because every time you schedule a half hour meeting, like you said, you've got about eight to nine minutes for you to kind of get back into what you were doing before. Yeah. You know, the, just the brain doesn't really function in a way where turn it on, turn it off. It Correct. doesn't work that way. Correct. Uh, and I think also with the advent of having so many people with ADHD and, you know, all slew of things, I think this definitely is going to be a helpful tool for, for MSPs and also for a lot of other businesses. Absolutely. So how come you guys are deciding to start off with the MSPs, if you don't mind me asking? One, one I think, is because we know the market extremely well, right? And um, I think, you know, tech, MSPs are typically at the forefront of technology and, and understanding the technology. But we also know that if we can teach MSPs how to increase their productivity, they also have access to, you know, millions of SMB businesses across North America and around the world that they can go in and educate their customers on a solution like Produce 8. So um, more of a channel approach. A channel approach, a value add for them, a new way for them to generate recurring revenue and call a spade a spade. MSPs today, they're struggling to maintain relevance with their customers. A lot of the times just because the tools and technologies, you know, the SaaS based tools that they're using today, it's hard for MSPs to kind of grab a hold and, and provide value in business. And so, you know, we feel if you think of like a VCIO approach, so like a virtual chief information officer, they go into these businesses the whole entire point is to sit down with them, have a conversation, give them vision and strategy over the next two, three years in terms of where their businesses are mm -hmm. going. There's no doubt that Produce 8 fits right, you know, right in there. Problem that we have right now is that Produce 8 is a new conversation. Most people have never thought about, hey, listen, can you help me on, and figure out how I can have better work days? Yeah. Right? We internally kind of use our application, and I wouldn't say it's exactly like this, but it's almost like um, when you think of like a Fitbit app or if you're familiar with the Noom Diet app, that basically all of those applications, what they teach you to do is enter your information in terms of how you, how you eat on a daily basis, what exercise are you doing, all of that yeah. kind of stuff. What Noom does really well is it changes how you operate, right? It starts giving you recommendations in terms of, you know, change your eating habits, change your eating times reduce your calorie intake if you don't follow something like that which it's a great technology if you don't follow something like that it becomes more difficult to say i'm going to make a change right and so as people go to the gym as they change their lifestyles and all that kind of stuff you need tools and technologies to kind of help you it's kind of like what produce eight but is for it's it's that for the business world mm -hmm. it's kind of like uh, a diet app for the business world, I guess. Yeah, well, I guess, yeah, in a way, because it, you're trying to help the business to run a little bit more mean and lean in such a way that they can essentially not waste, you know, four, five, six hours a day on meetings, internal meetings, that could generate nothing. Uh, or Correct. it could be, don't, don't get me wrong, some of those meetings may be important, but this will be able to highlight the importance of those meetings and what they, what they bring to the table. Yeah, I think so. I think, I, I think it's, it's everything together. 
right? I know I shared on, um, on LinkedIn the other day, you know, I was talking with a business and, you know, we did this ROI scenario where, you know, we took exactly, you know, a, a trend line in terms of how many meetings they have on a weekly basis. We took a look at their tools and technologies that they're using. You know, we played with a model in terms of like how we can reduce everything by 20, 30 percent across meetings and, you know, collaboration um, problems that they have with, you know, within the industry, within their business. And then what does that do from a productivity standpoint? Right. Because especially if you think of an MSP and you think about technicians on the help desk and all that kind of yeah. stuff, you know, they're they're looking at solutions and technologies 90 percent of the day. But, you know, really, they're probably only billing at 50 percent of their time. The rest is really just going from one solution to the next to the next uh, and being distracted. That business that, you know, that 25 employee business, I, I think the. If I'm not mistaken, it was probably close to about $450,000 in savings that they would have with wow. our technology. And without the technology, there would be no way for him to realize that. And, and so I think that's the unique piece that we'll be able to bring to market. It's Yeah, I mean, it's one thing to know that you have the issue. It's another to don't even realize that you have the sure. issue. And this is actually something that can pinpoint it and say, this is where your problem lies. Uh, it's like trying to go to the doctor and trying to get diagnosis without actually seeing the doctor and running the proper testing, you can't tell if you have a problem or you, not. You, you hit the nail on the head. Most businesses don't think that they have an issue. That Yeah. Or if they do think they have an issue, their hands are up in the air and they have no idea how to figure it out. Yeah. Right? And so we'll be able to, as we become really the de facto solution in the marketplace, we'll, we'll be able to really articulate that message. Like I said, it could be one person employee that's... Uh, that's a consultant or an accountant working out of their house to an organization has thousands of employees. That's crazy because I keep going back to that same conversation of activities, right? Like what activities have you done today? And one thing that I remember from our conversations back in the day is like you've always said, look at the dollar generating activities. Everything else does not matter. You know what I mean? Like, for example, if you know you're going to be on the phone making phone calls to clients, that's a dollar generating activity. Yeah. You talking to your, you know, your other employee or you're talking internally trying to get something done, that could be done in an email. You could avoid that by, you know, instead of having set up a meeting and all of that, wasting that time, you could avoid it by an email. So this seems like you guys kind of figured it out a little bit. I think so. I have a good feeling about it. The other thing that, like right now, uh, the technology is evolving on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. So... All these new releases that we're coming out with, uh, we have a great development team, just probably some of the smartest people I've ever come across in the industry. So I'm really excited about working with them. But, you know, the future of this technology is AI being put into it. And later on this year, we'll have AI coming into the solution to be able to kind of give you feedback uh, in terms of how you operate, giving you suggestions of the changes that maybe you can make and how you can improve you know, what you do on a daily basis. So that's that's the piece that's very exciting. I like the fact that you said earlier, it's just like we're always having the, one of the smartest people uh, working with us and all of that. I've always felt as a sales guy, I'm like the dumbest guy in the room working in high tech. And then that to me was the, the biggest thing that we I, I take away from it is that always work with the smartest people. And if you are the one learning from them, that's always the uh, the case. Is just making sure that you're you're not always the smartest person in the room. Yeah, you don't want to be the smartest person in the room. Humble, exactly. It humbles humble. you. Our job as as salespeople was connecting and, and yeah. then just getting the smart people to kind of figure the problem. Now, with that being said about Produce Eight, I just want to kind of look at sort of the next two to five years for you guys. What does that look like? What's the plan? Uh, how you plan on going to market with this a little bit heavier and give yeah. me kind of an idea. I think the the plan the plan this year is to really get our offering and solution known in the MSP space. Work closely with the the MSPs and help them become successful. We have a, a customer success plan, you know, as what we call like an impact plan or a blueprint for success, where you know once we onboard you, we'll teach you on how to operate your business in in a much better way, give you the suggestions that you need, leveraging the technology. You know, we feel that as we penetrate into the MSP space and, and they come onto our, their platform and all that kind of stuff, we're starting up and building out a, a channel program, uh, a partner program where they can actually go out and resell the solution mm -hmm. to their customers. And then over time, it's growing the business across the SMB marketplace, um, 
create that channel program. And then, you know, the business can evolve into distribution. It can evolve into a uh, direct sales model into the mid-market and enterprise space. So, um, like I said, this application, and you can have a consumer strategy. Uh, this application fits everywhere. It's not just, you know, a specific vertical market that can use it. It's any type of business in the world has these problems. And like, there, I think there's a lot of places where how this company can grow. I like also the fact that you guys kind of chose to go through the channel model versus the consumer. It is a lot, I don't want to say easier, but it's a lot more um, easier to penetrate, I guess, yeah. uh, per se, uh, if we were going through the channel model and what have you. And maybe just explain that to the consumer or to the folks that are watching. Like, what does that mean for you guys for going channel versus going direct? Yeah, I think I think once uh, well, it's it's about working on a whole bunch of things. So you you want to figure out your marketing strategy. It's really trying to get your messaging down pat. Going through the MSP channel is you're going to get a lot of feedback from them, right? As they go in and talk about it with their customers, you're going to get a lot of feedback in terms of direction where the technology needs to go, but also what's working and what's not. Yeah, and those are heavy users. Correct. Essentially, correct. Yeah. I I think I think I've always said this. Um, when you're a when you're a new company. And because we know the MSP space so well, it's a good solution that fits into the MSP space. When you're a startup, you have limited dollars and funds that you can that you can apply to yeah. go and build out a consumer strategy with limited marketing dollars is very very difficult. It costs a ton of money, and by the time you realize ROI, you know you're years down the road, and, and that's where a lot of companies fail. Going through a channel where people know, you know, myself and they know Mark Scott and they know Chris Day and they know Joel Abramson and, and everybody that's in the MSP space, it does open doors for you because they're willing to listen to you because yeah. they know you've done it before. You've brought solutions and technology to the marketplace that makes, uh, that resonates, that works for their businesses. Mm -hmm. And I, I think as we go into, as we go into that marketplace, what will happen is that we feel that there'll be a lot of attachment to the solution and technology. And then over time, the business will change and evolve in terms of new things. And I think it's also like you hit the nail on the head with the whole using the, some of the smartest people in the business, MSPs, don't get me wrong, at the end of the day, a lot of them are very, very smart people because they are running the technology in almost every business out there. Uh, these are the people that we rely on to run our office. These are the people that we rely on to run this service here that we yeah. have. Uh, so having these folks be your ally and contributing back to you guys, letting you know about the solution and how well it's working, I think it's it's the smartest move for sure. Yep, yeah. and... and um they're positioned well in the market space, right? Like yeah. they, they have access to, you think of, you know, there's what, 60,000 uh, plus or minus a few thousand, about 60,000 MSPs in North America. Um, you know, they attach themselves to millions of businesses. Yeah. Trusted advisor, as you mentioned, they are the external IT department for these businesses. Now what happens is a lot of MSPs, they, like as I said, they're struggling a little bit to bring new solutions and technology to market. Right, they, it's either they're switching from one platform to the next to try and save a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. Right, this is something completely new, and and so if we can bring a really good partner program to market where MSPs can uh, really drive more recurring revenue into in, into their business and bring yeah. value to their customers, then we think they will be in a good spot. Yeah, and you're just as good as the value that you provide at the end of the day for for any of those businesses, right? Like, I mean, we've all seen it: MSPs being switched over from business to another. Yeah. Uh, by having the ability to be able to hook a little bit more into the business and, and not only that, be that trusted advisor, give them that, look, you're actually wasting this much money a month by something like that. It's, it's definitely setting them apart from other MSPs out there as well. But with that being said, I want to get back into just, you know, since you've been an Ottawa local for quite some time, I want to talk a little bit more about, you know, growing up in Ottawa. What does that look like for Marco and, and how does it feel to still be in Ottawa till this day? When one boat thing that always comes to mind and maybe you can correct me on this one that sentence that everybody just kind of brings up every now and then Ottawa's boring what are your thoughts on that no <laughs> I don't think so I had a lot of fun growing I think it's a great city great city if if you're young if you're going to university at one of the schools here there's a lot of opportunity you know my friends that I grew up with will tell you like we had a lot of fun growing up in Ottawa and I think that there's a lot of character in the city and um, it's definitely changed over the last little while. Yeah. And probably, you know, probably for the better. But I don't think it's a sleepy city like everybody talks about. You know, I think it just depends what, you, what you're interested in. I think a lot of the times, like when, when someone says that statement, I 
beg the difference and to say, hey, look into your activities and see what you're doing because yeah. I feel like it might be a projection of what you're seeing in the mirror. Yeah. In a way. Um, one of the things that I wanted to chat with you about as well too, Marco, you've been into many businesses over the last 20 plus years. What does it feel like to build a business in Ottawa? It's, it's, one, it's a lot of fun. I think uh, like if we take a look at you know previous, uh, previous organization that fully managed in terms of what we built, there's a number of people that I work with uh, you know, over the years that you know, typically se- seem to come and, and follow me in terms of where I'm at, which is uh, a lot of comfort. And then there's always new people that you're bringing into the business you know, that, that bring a lot of value into you and help you out and stuff like that. I, I, think, I think auto is a great place to, to build a business. Mm-hmm. I think there is, um, as I said before, there's a lot of great people. Uh, a lot of great resources that you can that you can leverage. So you know, I'm very bullish about this city. You know, even like Produce Eight, where our head office right now is out of uh, is out of Vancouver, but the plan is to I'll be opening up an office uh, as we grow here in Ottawa and and building uh, you know sales and marketing support um, and business development and, and yeah. channel strategy uh, out of the Ottawa marketplace. And that's one of the things that I find in the city is there's so much talent, especially when it comes to high tech, software, uh, sales, you know, uh, customer service. There's so many different sort of folks that can bring in value to the businesses out there as well. Yeah. Uh, and I, actually what I wanted to do as well too, before we kind of sign off here, I wanted to just let the folks know how to reach to you, for example, to, you know, talk about business, talk about uh, what they can do with Produce 8 with you. Uh, some of the MSPs out there, what they can do to reach out to you as well too. Maybe you can just share some some of your wisdom and knowledge with them? Yeah, I, I mean, if anybody wants to get in contact with us, like, uh, they can visit produce8.com, like, produce8, uh, the number 8. Um, or you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm more than happy to talk to anybody. I, I mean, I get a lot of people, yeah. like, requesting conversations, and I'm more than happy to talk to as, as like, you know, I'll pull out any time that I need in order to, to speak to people and, and talk with them, so. Fantastic. Marco, really appreciate it, man. Thanks We've for having me. been trying me. to do this for quite some time, and I've been wanting to do an actual interview for as long as I've known you. I really appreciate the Thank time. Thank you. Uh, Congratulations to you on your success and what you're doing. And Thank you uh, so much. Really, really appreciate good it. Good luck uh, in real estate. Yeah. No, thank you. And also, Mark was a fantastic real estate investor as well, too, guys, just putting this out there. <laughs> if anyone has any ideas, br- bring it to market here. Just let us know. The one thing that I wanted to mention as well, too, if you like what you see, please hit the like button. And don't forget to subscribe as well, too. We've got a lot more people, a lot of more businesses coming here to the channel. And we'll be uh, feeding this out uh, for you guys. So don't hesitate to reach out. Again, Canada on the Rocks. Thanks again. Thanks, Marco. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.